Good morning. Does spending in raid take away the fun or make the game less fun? This discussion came up not too long ago. I released the video talking about how effectively the champions that you have or the champions that you have built or the teams that you built for something like Hydra or whatever effectively become, I guess, less effective, maybe even obsolete. We were reacting to this uh, this guy who was a Kraken, a self-proclaimed Kraken on Reddit. And he said, you know, basically that. That, oh, I had spent so much money and I kept chasing new champions. And every time I got a new champion, I realized that the work I put in before for these other champions, basically, you know, hours wasted. And then, you know, people in the comments were either with him some people were against him same thing in the in that video the comments you know were both on both sides but a lot of people were kind of leaning more towards um like yeah it's kind of a waste right like you can you can spend hours trying to put together you know a solid hydra team and then pull a new champion and then have to rework an entire new uh synergy and a new team together for hydra effectively making you know this team uh, this team sucks by the way this is this is the a team that i have on on the giveaway account by the way if you're interested in the giveaway account uh, i have a community post talking about that but i don't want to delve into that here but just showing you guys uh, i'm running this in the background while i'm doing that but like if, essentially like if i pulled a new champion just just you know humor me here this team might have to change right that's just that's just the way that it is and, you know, some people were arguing, uh, Burrito, yeah, but I mean, that's kind of the point. You know, you work hard to get more points so that you can do more damage, get better gear. Uh, you know, the, the whole never-ending cycle of let's get better to get better and then we'll be better. So, yeah, you, you know, you kind of uh, are hitting a certain point where, quote-unquote, it does become a waste, but at the same time, it doesn't. It's this weird conundrum, Right. And I think the crux of the dilemma for most people was the spending. This was a guy who made a lot of money, who could afford to spend the kind of money that he was on his account. But this argument still came up. This this discussion came up, and you know, and it came up in, in that video. So I thought, you know, why don't I put a poll up, asking you guys? So I asked the question here. I gave some uh, points of discussions that if you wanted to talk about, you could. Um, 31 of you guys voted, so I appreciate that. 55% of you said, yes, it does. 45% of you guys said, no, it doesn't. And we're going to delve into the 13 or 12 comments, because this one counts as one here. Uh, we're going to talk about your guys' comments here. So thank you to everybody who voted. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Woohoo X8 said, when I was younger and much poorer, I would have frowned at the idea of spending money to help win a video game. I had a silly idea that I was more honorable and something if I didn't... Oh, more honorable or something if I didn't spend money, even though I would drop hours and hours into a silly game. That's true. Somebody said it that... You know, somebody in my other comments was like, Oh, for some reason, free-to-play players have this thing about them, right? Oh, I'm free to play. I'm free to play this. I'm free to play that. And it's like they've got some moral high ground or something. That's what he was saying. Of course, I corroborated with it. And I was like, yeah, you know, I've seen that too. I've seen that too. People who are like, oh, I'm free to play. I'm not saying that's bad or anything. I'm just saying I've seen it. And like, I, I get where he's coming from. I've come to realize in my 30s that so many things in life are paid to win one way or another. That's true. You could spend money or you could spend time. And people are born into drastically different circumstances and are at various stages in life. True. I'm happy to be a low spender that buys the gem pack, $9 a month. Or, sorry, $10. But they market it as $9.99. And most forge passes, which is pretty good, was that, 25 bucks. Even though I know I'll never compete with whales and krakens. And those numbers are if you're not factoring in opportunity costs. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt or... You know, the the other argument is, oh, but you had fun. Yeah, that was another big argument. Like, yeah, I spent this money, but I had fun. Or I spent this time, but I had fun doing it. That's that's totally valid. But he's right. You're never going to compete with whales and krakens in $1 million plus accounts. 
You're just not. I see spending now only as bad if it becomes an addiction, or as the neuroscientist Andrew Huberman put it, the progressive narrowing of the things in life that bring you pleasure. Say it again. The progressive narrowing, meaning it's starting to close in, starting to get smaller, of the things in life that bring you pleasure. Spending can be bad if an addiction, something that you are obsessed with and will push and shove and cut down anything in the way to get to, gets to a point, if it progresses to that certain point where like everything that brings you joy starts to get smaller and smaller. You know? And I think there's there's some truth in that. Because if you need... It's, it's like any drug, right? If you need X amount... I'm drinking coffee right now, by the way. I didn't know this. Fucking hell, I did not know this. Coffee is classified as a drug. It's classified... As, look, look this up. You can Google it. Coffee counts as a drug. I didn't know that. But as I'm drinking this, I realize what Woohoo is saying is, is making sense, right? The first time I had coffee when I joined the military at 18 years old, I got this rush, right? I'd never really had caffeine before. Like, yeah, I had soda. It's not the same thing. Never really fucked around with energy drinks. But I had coffee the first, the first time. And like one cup of shit Joe coffee. I'm talking military-grade coffee, which is basically... It, it looks like murky water and tastes like turpentine. It's basically tea. Was enough to get me hyped all the way, all the way up, right? Now... I'm a lot older. I've been drinking coffee for years. I need multiple cups of coffee. Right? And I'm not talking about the weak coffee. I'm talking about Nespresso's. Nespresso, uh, you know, if you don't know, is basically, you know, it's a, it's a lot stronger. It's a lot stronger. I think I read something like 250, 300 milligrams of caffeine in, in one Nespresso pod. I drink two or three of these a day. I need a lot more of this coffee for me to get the same hit. That's what it is. It's a hit. All right. By the way, I also didn't know this, that coffee doesn't actually keep you awake. It stops the fe the chemicals in your mind that are telling you that you're sleepy or tired from firing those, those signals. So like if there's a sleep debuff, it doesn't necessarily get rid of um, sleep. I mean, it, I guess it kind of does, but it blocks. It's like a block buff for a sleep debuff. Basically, that's what coffee is. That's crazy. Woohoo, thank you for sharing your insight with me. I appreciate you for sharing your experience. And this will stick with me right here. The progressive narrowing of the things in life that bring you pleasure. I guess, you know, if we relate back to Raid, if you need to keep spending more money in order to, I don't know, keep up or chase champions or fucking, like, think about it, guys. You guys have seen, or maybe you haven't, some of you guys have seen how I am with my shard pulls, right? Sometimes I pull up, like, huge champions, new champions that I don't have that I'm kind of, like, really happy about. But it's not the same as when I first started playing Raid. Like, my you guys know this, my first legendary champion was at level 35 back in 2019. I pulled a Cupidus. My first legendary champion, I was hyped all the way up. Super excited. I turned all the way up for a dude. I, I, I got... I, I, I was in France at the time, by the way. I was visiting Paris. I did a study abroad in Paris. So I was learning French. And uh, the first thing I did was I, I went to a bar in Paris. And I like I celebrated. Like, oh, I, I got a legendary champion. I got Cupidus. Nowadays, like, I get Cupidus. And I'm kind of like, all right, that, that's cool. Or I pull champions like my third Duchess, for an example. And I don't even really acknowledge it. I was more excited about getting the panda, if you saw that video than I was about getting duchess, because it's just like, you know, how many duchesses do I need? An argument could be made for three, but not really. I was fine without it. I guess I could empower, but who cares? So, I guess that is sort of an issue with myself, if I were to, you know, take a deep dive into myself. But then again, the other argument is, is it really an issue? I'm, I'm happy. I'm fine. I'm not stressing over it. It is what it is. Or like I pull a champion and I'm like, eh, I don't really want the champion. But then someone's just like, dude, I wish I had that champion. Like a, I don't know, a, a Rotos. 
or not Rotos, or a Pytheon. Or I, I have like three Pythons and a plus one Pytheon. And I commented about that, and someone was like, dude, I wish I had a Pytheon. I'm not that lucky. I, I wish I could give you a Pytheon. Cable 6416. Thank you for sharing this. My general vibe on video games is spend what's within your budget on what makes you happy. True. Said it here once, said it on the channel twice. I'll say it again. Do, do what you want with your money. It's your money. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your, own, your money, right? Your hard-earned money. As long as it's decent in the sense that it, it gives you even just a modicum of pleasure. Hopefully it gives you a lot of pleasure and enjoyment. And you're not hurting anybody, right? Raid is interesting as a gacha game in that it is more that it has more gameplay than most and can be approached it can be approached free to play for a time that's true it goes into like this ups and downs right cuz you could you could start off free to play then you're going to hit this wall where like you don't know what to do and you can't do anything more until you get to like a, another area of the game where you finally get better gear and get better champions and, then, and then there's there's that grind right or you're like me, where you were free to play at first, then you were pay to win, then you got to the end game, able to do everything, and then now you're free to play again. But you're not really ever free to play. The minute you spend a dollar, you're not free to play anymore. I don't care what you say. You're not free to play. You're fucking not. And I, and I say that because I've met people who are like, I'm free to play, but I buy the gem pack. You know what I mean? That's not free to play. Even buying the gem pack gives you more of an advantage than anybody who's free to play. At some point in the late game, all of your encounters are against whales in Hydra Clash. True. Live arena and tag team arena. True. I don't recommend early game or newer game players to spend much outside of maybe the daily gem packs or forge passes because it, it gets you um, because it just gets you to the spending inflection point faster. Spending inflection point. I don't, I don't know what that means, but I can ca kind of gather an idea. He says, I don't recommend that you guys spend much money. Um, I guess it's like this point of diminishing returns, right? So there's a certain point that you're going to get to as a, as, as a player who is spent in the early game and as a player uh, has, has spent in the end game. Sorry if my thoughts are all over the place. When I spent early game... I got a lot out of it. Shards, energy, gems, you name it. I got a lot more value from that. If I were to spend $10 now, I would not get much out of it. There's not a lot that 10 bucks is going to do for me in my, my account. It's just not. So that's what the spending inflection point is, I think. If you're watching this cable, maybe verify it um, in your words, please. But there's a point of diminishing returns for people who spend right after you get to a certain point the value of your dollar kind of starts to lose its steam i'm just gonna leave this i'm putting teams together for the giveaway account i'm trying to but it's not really uh panning out too well uh this is hydra normal uh the account the giveaway account has double trunda so i i rock that i tried double uh, i tried trunda and double Double Yumiko, sorry. I tried double Trunda and Yumiko, but um, I think this just works out better, the Fear Heads. I tried putting a team together for this as well, but it, it is what it is. I don't think that this team that I'm testing out right now is going to do much, but let's go ahead and, and try it, and we'll see what happens there, All right? Money is not going to do much for me in this account, part of why I don't really spend anymore. At that point, you can either take the losses on your chin or continue to slowly progress your account, or you can spend. And you don't just spend a little. You have to spend a lot to compete. Do you guys know of or remember... What was his name? Mac Chan. When Mac Chan left, he was talking about how he was spending thousands of dollars on a monthly basis just to keep up. Just to keep up in raid. To be able to perform at plat at the plat level he had to spend a lot of money to get the specific meta champions and, and good gear and etc 
That's not cheap. You try to swim with the Krakens, you're going to drown or get eaten up. I tried to make an analogy there. I don't know if it, it hit. You, let me know. Maybe you got a better one. But the point is, he had to spend a lot of money, and he eventually decided, you know, enough is enough, because the amount of money that I, um, I'm assuming the amount of money that he spent was enough for, like, a down payment on a house. And you're, 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 go you're talking about guys who spend, like, $600,000 in raid and even those guys are like, that's not a lot of money. And then Ash comes out with a video talking about like a million dollar account. And then everybody's like, oh, wow. That's new. It's not new, guys. It's not new. This has been a thing. Some of those void packs will only get you rares. True. I recommend taking the slower course. I stopped spending in 2023 after the best possible deal on a void shard pack got me nada. Have you guys seen that Void Chain Pack? I used to buy that. I used to buy the Void Chain Packs, and then I would save for like a 2x. I've got a Yumiko's. I've got an Taurus. I got, um, I've got a lot of champions, Void Champions off, off of those packs. But there were some points where like I would summon almost 200 shards to get nothing. Those are not cheap. Those are like $200, $250. Something like that, if I remember correctly. I haven't bought them in a long time. Meanwhile, you'll watch some free-to-play cl uh, clan mates pulling Legos that you need, and it only breeds resentment towards the game if you spent. Accept it for what it is. Don't chase the FOMO. The game is predicated on FOMO. Raid Shadow Legends is predicated on FOMO. Everywhere you turn, FOMO. Packmaster, guys. Oh, don't miss out on Packmaster because there's a dog coming out. You know, he might be good for you. I'm not going to say that Packmaster is bad. A lot of you guys... Maybe even the newer players are like, yeah, you know, I like Packmaster. The people around me, Endgame, don't think he's good. Like, I haven't met one uh, Endgamer who's like, you know, besides somebody who's a, a champion collector who just collects just to collect. What, there's nothing wrong with that. Most of the guys I've talked to are just like, eh, he's, he's, he's nothing special. Or, you know, even a little bit further beyond. The dog that's going to come along with Packmaster, if, you know, that, that was alluded by, by the way, that was alluded to, not confirmed by Polarium. I think, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, if I'm wrong, let me know. But, um, yeah. Forgot my point there. Meanwhile, you'll watch, the, um, with that being said, I am a bit concerned with some of the spend mandatory champions like Teox that are entering the game. Pretty much, right? Because you can only farm so many Prism Crystals with the events and stuff that only gets you so much. And I've never pulled a legendary champion from a prism. I've seen many people pull um, champions, legendary champions from prisms. Oftentimes not the champions that they want, that they want like dupes of, of champ. Like I saw some guy um, pull for Teox and he pulled like, like two Draco morphs. Y you know what I mean? And he spent a lot of money. For that because those prism shards aren't cheap and i don't even think they got a mercy system finally i don't think krakens make the game free to play uh let's see what what else you're gonna say that's an argument gambling addicts make that seem to miss the fact that other companies like fromsoft don't have prat yep fromsoft is a great example good job if you play dark souls or elden ring big ups to you don't have uh, predatory spending mechanics yet make good money with game of the year tier gameplay. Yeah, those are those are awesome games. These gotcha companies are run like venture capital fund, so their profit benchmarks are set to absurd, unnecessary points for keeping the game afloat. I'm not really sure how that doesn't make the game free to play. Because I think that the Krakens who line Polarium's wallets make it free to play for the rest of us. I think that because they spend so much, Polarium is able to keep the game alive. You know, they they take their profit, but then they also reinvest that profit into their product, at least for now. It might get to a point where Polarium's just like, eh, we're going to drop the ball here and we're going to move on to our next project. Thank you guys for your money. Um, fuck you very much. On to the next game. I think that because of, you know, Kraken spending, Kraken money, it makes the game free to play for the rest of us because the game could not 
I don't think the game would look this good or function this well. You know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm being, I'm not saying it's perfect. It's not a perfect game, but like, you know what I mean? Without Kraken spending money. So that's my take on it. I don't fully agree here. Um, and I don't think I saw an argument here about why Kraken spending negates um, the game being free to play. Exactly. Not that I'm disagreeing with you. Not that I, that I'm not willing to hear your side of it. I just don't see it with uh, your argument here. Joel one nine four says, "I would say yes if you buy your way to end game. What you are playing for, or what are you playing for after that? Showing off how much you spent. As for what is end game, you are at the end of every hard dungeon and one key. Oh, sorry. Let me break this down." He's answering the question, does spending in raid make the game less fun? He says yes. Why? Because if you buy your way to endgame, what are you playing for after that? Once you've quote-unquote beaten the game, you've get, you've got into the endgame, like what, what, what else is there for you? And I've talked about that before. I knew a guy who spent over $60,000 in nine months. He was way further along the game than I was, and I had been playing for four years at that time. I hadn't spent that much money. Um, and he was like, yeah, I don't play anymore. There's nothing for me to do. I was like, damn, that sucks. Showing off how much he spent. And then there were, he was answering a different question. You know, what is considered end game? That was a, that was a discussion that they were having in channel two. And for a while, I thought personally, and I'll admit when I'm wrong, I personally thought that end game was, or the beginning of end game was when you got Ramantu. To me, that was the beginning of end game. Um, mid game, I considered to be, what did I consider mid game? Actually, no, it was, what I said was late game is Arbiter. Late game is, yeah, late game is Arbiter. I think that's what I said. I can't remember word for word. But they were saying like, no, um, late game is actually Ramantu, especially with all the new content. Ramantu is considered late game. You're not into end game. It goes, if you're wondering what the progressive progression is, it's like newbie, beginner, then it's mid game, then it's late game, then it's end game. And then there's what I like to say, balls deep end game, where pretty much all you, um, you know, after you speed run all the hard 10 dungeons and are able to over one key, like do billions in Hydra, then I'd say you're like balls deep end game. And then do most of Centranos, but yeah. Uh, you are at the heart of every one key you and him clamp doing over one billion damage and higher. Yeah, exactly. Spending is... Oh. Hey, Ram, what's up, man? Spending is not good for anyone. Only if you are a video uh, maker, then it's... Then it's... Then it's good. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, if, if you spend... I, I want to say maybe it's not a bad thing for everyone. I never like making blanket statements. Because every individual is different and everybody has different circumstances and everybody's got different circumstances at different times. So I don't like making blanket statements. But yeah, if you're a video maker, then yeah, you're going to want to spend money. You have to spend money to make money. Um, that's an oversimplification of it, but the idea is you need to invest in a product that's going to generate you, you know, assuming it's a hit and XYZ factors line up. It's going to show when you invest something into your work right for an example um like the difference between me just throwing uh, this video together no editing or, or whatever like i think the idea and the premise is good and it's interesting enough and i'm in that type of community where a lot of you guys just like hanging out and talking about these discussions and love the video um uh topics and the academic uh discussions that are involved in this that as it relates to the video game right but for other things i don't think i could pull this off for like if i wanted to i don't know be in a video game space that's not raid shadow legends i can't just pull up a, a video game and, and talk like this that's just not how it works that's where uh, your investment this the money you spend for like an editor makes a difference then that would be a good thing like for an example my other two channels i well i guess for right now for one channel I'm, i have a lot of editing being done but for my uh other channel yeah that's, that's beside the point let's go on to the next one david says i spend and it doesn't ruin anything for me primarily i spend to play more energy 
So without the spending, I'd enjoy the game less because I'd be able to play it less. Logic, logic checks out, right? You need energy in this game in order to do anything. Because if you're not, if you're not able to, uh, you know, do anything, then you're not playing the game. Other than maybe thinking and theory crafting and putting teams together. I mean, there's other areas of the game here that don't require energy. But if you're end game and you've already got everything down pat, then there's not really any need to to do any of that other stuff. So you kind of just shut the game down or you do what I do and you just open up multiple accounts and you start playing on multiple accounts. Um, so yeah. Logic checks out. I think it depends on how much you spend and what you're getting out of the game. True. I think we've already hashed that. Who am I to say someone spending is sucking the fun out of it? Oh, how... Oh, how do I know what is fun and not fun for them? That's true. It, it's subjective. Intentional Kyle. Depending on everyone's point of view, but no. Paying doesn't take away the fun in this game. It helps grow stronger and faster, but this same objective is achievable through time investment too. Yeah, he's right. And we've talked about this before. You either spend money or you spend time in this game. You can be free to play, but I guarantee you, you're going to spend a lot of time. You're going to spend a lot of time regardless. Let's be honest. Let's be real. But I think if you're free to play, you're going to spend a lot more time in game. And, you know, th that's the other argument. Are you going to spend your, your time or are you going to spend some money to get ahead so that you can save yourself time? Which is which was my rationalization. Rationalization. I can't say the word. Rationalization. Every time I would spend, I'd be like, you know, I'm I'm spending this money because it's only you know a fraction of what I make in an hour outside of you know YouTube, and um, it saves me the time I would have to spend in game to put this together. I'll just summon a new champion, or I'll just buy the gear. You know what I mean? Or, you know, X, Y, and Z. So, paying for monthly gems or a few packs here and there, it ain't the only game... Uh, oh, th he's saying that he's paying. It's not the only game I've spent money on, and every time thinking that this is a way of thanking the dudes that put the work in for such content, hoping that it gives a new budget for the next one. On the other hand, through experiences of the company management and knowing how it has to be working... I honestly doubt that recently any new budget has been put in this way, and I mean enough budget to do a good job, not that unfinished Clan Siege concept. Yeah. Moreover, while reading Playroom's recent news and management changes, just to not make it too long, the community and the CCs make this game what it is today. I expect a lot of people watching YouTube raid videos um, to be already part of an active clan or to be able to tell their favorite CC without blinking, and as... Uh, Polarium's recent, uh, recently tried with including nubs in a ceremony, they should make the game even more fun this way and engage real funds into events, which might... Sorry, it's a, it's a run-on sentence here. Uh, into events, which might bring more positive outcomes for the whole raid brand than anything they could put in the game. Video games and the internet are made to meet, but real life is the place you should uh, truly do so. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, I think he pretty much said it. The community is like the thing within Raid. It's the only reason I'm still playing Raid. Because I guarantee you, if the, if the community wasn't as good as it is, I would not be playing Raid for as long as I as I have. Um, video games are a great escape. Video games uh, games are a great form of entertainment. And above all, like it's a great way to communicate and meet people around the world or be part of something that you normally wouldn't be. If you're like me, I don't like... I don't, I'm old. I don't fuck around with going outside much anymore. I have my group of friends. I got my group of friends and that's it. I don't want new friends. I, I, I like my friends. I don't need somebody else new coming. I'm not going out. I'm not trying to meet new people. Um, so the internet, being a content creator, being in raid is a great way for me to, I guess, get a little bit of um, connection. I mean, I don't really need it. I got my wife. I got my life. I got my friends, my brothers. But... I'm not going to say it's a bad thing or that I don't like it because I like hanging out with you guys. I like, um, you know, communicating and talking with you guys about topics that I'm passionate about because I, I love Raid. I do complain about some things. I try to keep things positive. But at the same time, if nobody ever complains about things, the companies never change. And, you know, what they say, the squeaky oil is the one that gets the wheel, right? Don't stay silent 
silent about things. Otherwise, uh, video game companies aren't going to you know, be better. They're going to keep putting out shit.